Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's corruption trial resumed today. This is the country's first ever public corruption trial of a sitting Prime Minister. Netanyahu arrived in court to attend the opening statement of the trial. The chief prosecutor in his opening statement said that Prime Minister Netanyahu made illegitimate use of his power to seek to trade favours with media moguls. One of the key witnesses to be called today is former CEO of Wala News, Ilan Yeshua who helped break open the bribery case against the Prime Minister. Yeshua and subsequently other editors and reporters from Wala are expected to give a detailed description of how exactly they went about fulfilling Netanyahu's demands, which included numerous takedowns of articles that were good for his competitors. According to the Jerusalem Post, there were 315 alleged incidents of Netanyahu interfering with Wala's news coverage from 2013 until December 2016. Protesters were seen outside the Jerusalem court with banners reading, Crime Minister. The 71-year-old Prime Minister has been accused of bribery, fraud and breach of trust in connection to three separate cases. He formally pleaded not guilty to charges at a hearing in February. Till now, his trial has been delayed several times because of coronavirus-related restrictions and last month's general election as well. The election failed to end the deadlock that has plagued Israeli politics for the last two years, with Mr. Netanyahu's right-wing bloc and the parties opposed to him both currently short of a majority in the parliament. Meanwhile, Israeli president began the two-day consultations with Likud party officials to determine who has a plausible path towards a 61-seat majority. Joining us on this broadcast now is Jody Cohen, who is an international affairs expert, and she's joining us from Jerusalem. Jody, how important is this testimony by former CEO of Wala News, Ilan Yeshua, in this case? So this is an important testimony. I mean, this is a significant day in the history of Israel. We're seeing the first sitting prime minister appearing in court, listening to the first witness in his uh, case where there is alleged charges of bribery, fraud and breach of trust against him. Now, the public is very much split into four camps, as I was described with them. You've got the pro-Netanyahu supporters who believe that this is a witch hunt against him. Then you've got his detractors who would like to see him resign as prime minister. And then you've got those in between who either believe that the prime minister has the right to be considered innocent until proven guilty, like any citizen in a court case, um, or those who believe that even if he is charged, that these are in fact minor charges. He's alleged, um, he's accused of accepting cigars and champagne and of trying to get positive media coverage. And those um, supporters would say that actually all politicians try and get positive media coverage. So they would see these as minor charges. How is this trial expected to impact uh, Benjamin Netanyahu's political career? So I think the trial has already had an impact. We've seen over the last couple of years, we've had a number of elections and the public has been aware of these charges against Netanyahu. So I think those numbers are built into the, um, the results of the election. We're now seeing actually split screens on the television this morning in Israel. On the one hand, you've got Prime Minister Netanyahu appearing in court. On the other hand, you've got the heads of the political parties who were elected to the parliament going to visit the president and making their recommendations of who they think can form a coalition government. And so the court case today will possibly, will undoubtedly impact who those parties would like to see um, forming a, a coalition government. But again, Prime Minister Netanyahu, he won the election and he is the candidate who is most likely to receive the most number of mandates. Now, um, notes that I say he's most likely to receive the most number of mandates, that doesn't necessarily mean that he'll still be able to form a coalition government. There's 120 seats in the Israeli parliament, and to get a majority, a candidate needs 61. And at the moment, Prime Minister Netanyahu is expected to receive 52 mandates. 
And the Ram Party and the Yamina Party um, are really the kingmakers in this, but it's not known if they will both support Prime Minister Netanyahu, and it's actually quite unlikely that there'll be a coalition of all those parties together. Now, President Rivlin uh, will have to really make a decision on Wednesday. He has to decide who he will give the mandate to try to form a coalition government. Traditionally, he would give it to Prime Minister Netanyahu in this case because he won the election and he'll get the most mandates to form a coalition government. However, he's coming to the end of his term. There's known um, animosity between President Rivlin and Prime Minister Netanyahu. Who knows what might happen? He's already um, said uh, this morning that he doesn't see an option for Yair Lapid, who's come in second, to be able to form a coalition government. Right. Perhaps there'll be some out-of-the-box thinking. And we've got Prime Minister, uh, we've got Naftali Bennett, who is positioning himself. He'd like to be the Prime Minister. There's a, a chance, a small chance, but there's a chance that Naftali Bennett, together with Gideon Saar, who's another right-wing party head, um, perhaps with the support of the Shas party, perhaps they might be able to form a coalition. The other op option that is being talked about, and was in, uh, there was a poll this morning that showed that the majority of parliamentarians in this Knesset would support Prime Minister Netanyahu to be President Netanyahu. Yeah. Because President Rivlin is due to end his term in July. There's going to be an election of the next president coming up. And they see this perhaps as a way to end the current political deadlock. Jody Cohen, thank you so much for joining us uh, with the latest on this big international story.